Tarantino sitting in a chair and getting jerked off by people. And <laughs> climax Wonderful. at the time of everyone's death. I mean, that is excellent. All right. Now, our very fun, uh, I don't even know what we call you at this point. The protege. The protege, <laughs> Dakota. Dakota has a very important and special question to ask you all. Now, I opened up your, your CD case to find uh, 30 immolated, Dr. Death, Garrett, and Vomit, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Madam Champsville, Whips and Shrieks, Mr. Bones, Impalements, and Bellows, Disgusting Smith Flair, and Barks. What are these nicknames? Like, what do they mean? Uh, uh, so, well, those are the names of us as our Libertine characters. So ah! I am Dr. Death, uh, just one of, the, one of your aristocratic Libertines. I'm Madame Chanville. The mistress of maggots herself. And uh, my brother, the drummer, is Mr. Bones. And so it's like a list of like the person's name, their instrument, and their basic vocal range. Oh. Oh. So wait, your character name was? Dr. Death. So Dr. Death enters the room to this song every time you do a show. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> we almost should, you know. <laughs> we're like, we're this is Wagner, arrange, right? Do an arrangement. Isn't this Wagner? There you go, it'd be very appropriate. Yeah. This is, the composer of this is Wagner. He's like this crazy German composer ah. uh, who uh, was very anti-Semitic and just kind of like everyone ended up hating him because he was gay. Oh, yeah, fair enough. But now it's time for everyone to listen to the Juan Swanson quote of the day. That is a true fact that I believe is very <laughs> uh, brutally honest. <laughs> I yeah. have to agree. <laughs> Kevin, I love cats. <laughs> yeah, I like cats, cats a little. It's not really something against cats. It's just saying like little yappy dogs aren't dogs. Yes, that's true. Yes. Yeah, you but can't. you just said cats are useless as well. Yeah. Well, I, right? I, I guess other than catching mice, what do they do? <laughs> Goats Sleep. are definitely over fifty pounds, are they not? You go turn the different They keep you humble. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they, they keep, keep them humble. satisfied. That's right. Because what? they look at you like you're worth nothing right. all the time. That's what I love about them. Mail of the them. night. <laughs> yeah, trip you in the stairs, you know, all that right. stuff. <laughs> As you all know, we have Justin here in studio today, and he, and his facial range has gone so many different directions <laughs> in this first hour and a half and it's amazing. Happy to oblige. <laughs> oh, he's taking the mic. No. Just this, I'm not gonna lie, this is the most entertaining thing that's happened on a Tuesday night for me in a very long time. I mean, the saddest yes. thing was today, your Montreal Canadiens did lose. Eight to one. To who? To the Boston Bruins. I'm so the sorry. First in the place. Atlantic Boston harsh, Bruins. Man. That is harsh, but you know it's not that harsh. harsh. What? The Carolina Hurricanes won. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, they, well, congratulate. Wait, you beat Detroit. Thank you. We beat Congra a team that we were guaranteed to defeat. Yeah. Montreal. They had Carey Price in that. Let Five me. goals on eleven shots. Oh, they at least pulled him after yeah. the fifth goal. Unlike, yeah. unlike who? Who? Who Who asked to tra be traded after that horrible night? Who? 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 I don't know who. Patrick Waugh! Oh, yeah. Let in nine goals? Yeah, that was nine goals. If I'm pretty sure if Kerry Press... A couple of live games when we were in Edmonton, which was actually, for me, amazing. I've never seen yeah. hockey not on the screen before. I thought yeah. that was incredible, to be honest. Excellent. Being able to follow, you know, the game your own way without the camera. It's a lot easier to follow the puck live. Oh my god. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah it's it crazy. It's impossible. And you, it you don't get the nausea from the camera shoot. <laughs> yeah. though, too. Well, w what year did you watch the game in Edmonton? <laughs> it would have been between two the, like 2010, 2011. Oh, Taylor Hall's rookie year. So, meh. Edmonton Oilers? Oh yeah, no, they were doing no, awful. No, no. They were known as the Ruiner team. <laughs> so they couldn't really win too many games unless there was like a really good team and then they would just destroy this good team for no good reason and then go on to suck for the rest of the games. I mean, yeah. that just sounds like... That sounds like Montreal right now. They're like, well, with the exception of tonight's monstrosity against the Bruins, they usually 
like beat all the good teams and in, like against teams like say like New Jersey and Columbus New Jersey. they lose. It's awful. You know what's not awful? The Carolina Hurricanes are winning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Justin. You know I love you, right? I know you do. <laughs> it's a good song though. No, no, no. He doesn't get that upset with me. Or yeah. does he? I'm good. You're a good friend. You in French. Or at least I know you try your best. I have two YouTube tabs open on my laptop and both are the brass minute. <laughs> it's the only song you listen to other than metal. Hey, that is extremely true. And in fact, but speaking of metal, we can talk to the metal bit more about metal. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll hand it back to the metals. The, the metals. metals. The oh, metal. Wait, wait, wait! Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on! Before we get past the mic, though, yes, you have a question for the band. Why the wedding dress? Okay. Wow. So for a couple of reasons, one in the the movie, which is part of what I based the piece on, Salo by Paolo Pasolini. Uh, the libertines dress up in wedding dresses and they marry themselves to the victims in order to prepare them for the uh, defloration of their anuses. Oh! And then that night, Interesting. For, yes, they copulate having you know, anal sex and that you know, completes the marriage for them. Uh, also, if you take a look at the philosophies of Marquis de Sade, he's all about nature and rebirth and spectacular life through like grotesque death, which means like when you die, you become part of the earth and then you're recycled, right? So it's like a very atheistic way of looking at things. And so marriage is like a, <coughs> marriage through death is like negation. That's like nothing but a violence, like a, a unity of two different things in order to destroy singular identity. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Does that satisfy you, Justin? It weirded me out, that's for sure. The goat will satisfy you a little more. <laughs> Now, where can my friend find a fine goat that will satisfy him to the highest of satisfaction? Oh man, you gotta go up north to some uh, some good old farms and just like steal one. You gotta look for one with like the twinkle in its eye. Oh. Right? It has to give you that special wink. Yeah, you want it to fight a little too, right? <laughs> it's no fun if everything's too easy. Right? It'd be a bit of a struggle. Right, right. Struggle snuggle? No. Struggle. Struggle. <laughs> the struggle cuddle. Oh, there the you go. <laughs> now, it says here your major influence on your Facebook page is the sound. No, yeah, yeah, the sound of torture and screams. How accurate does that apply into your everyday life? Well, it depends on you know what side of the bed I wake on, but <laughs> <laughs> generally it depends. If the slaves are screaming in the right key, then it really kind of gets me going, makes me want to eat my breakfast and work out. But if they're just kind of moaning and they're like really lazy, I'm not really inspired to do much. Who screams more, the slaves or your s or your child? Oh man, depends. If we take the TV away from our child, for sure. <laughs> 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 That's a fact. That is a that fact. Is a fact. <laughs> now, does your child know of what the band is about? He's five. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, it's worth asking. You never so know. He helps me make the poop cookies and the blood. Oh, okay. He knows that he's he knows that I wear a dress and Ruth wears the the suit and yeah. And he knows that we're in a heavy metal band. Yeah, he knows he's we go to the uh, the heavy metal bar to work. He understands yeah. that too. Yeah. And if there's something like really kind of like hilariously gross, he'll tell me that we should put it into our show. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. So he has a little <laughs> bit of an idea that there's weird things going on in it's heavy metal. Okay. What what idea of his? Did he recommend that you actually physically did? Oh, I'm trying to think. It was just like I don't think I was even there for that. Something about like happen? squishing frogs or something like that. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That could work. You should put that in your show, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a way to fit that one in right? for sure. Think of, like squish a frog. But <coughs> just for the audience, it's not going to be very effective because it's so small. They're not really going to see what happens. You could bring it up to people and individually. you got humans on stage. Now that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Squishing humans is the good. The visuals are much more um, squished ahead. Yeah, effective <laughs> if, for sure. If I may too, was this when you guys met you know, and put this together, was this something that you both had an idea of the same or did one need coaxing to sort of bring this production together? 
Uh, well, like, I, it was mainly my piece because it's my thesis, but Ruth was, I was always just bouncing every idea off of Ruth and kind of leaned to her for a lot of the like, aesthetic decisions and things like that. And, like, we're both composers, so I'm like, oh, I have a problem, what's going to come up next, and this and that. I just, we sit there and we hash it out quite a while. I didn't have any problems with anything. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Well, a lot of aesthetics, but I'm also a little bit of a control freak because Ruth will tell you, in like the jam room, I'm a bit of a jerk to everyone. Oh. <laughs> He's got a middle name that I can't say on the air. Oh, okay, yep. Oh, that's, that's why I said, you, you, somebody was talking about complaining about the, uh, the spouse, you know, it becomes difficult when you work together, but trust me, we have no problems. Yeah. <laughs> Telling each other with a good giggle, of course. Of course, so yes. Of course. Absolutely. Now, yeah. how did the two of you meet? Aha. Uh -huh. Haha! <laughs> you get to tell Well, I was story. here at Mohawk, actually. Really? Yeah. Wow. I was uh, back, yeah, in like 2001. Yeah. I was in my uh, the preparatory year of uh, the music program, and he was in his first year because I just moved from Switzerland um, to Canada. I'd only been here for a year, so I did all my musical education over there, but it was in French. And I didn't know the terms in English for everything, uh, you know, <coughs> tonal harmony, all that stuff. So I did the prep year. He was a year ahead of me. And I, I'm also a classical guitarist. And I was taking lessons with a um, guy who was in his class, a friend of ours. And he introduced us. And then uh, it turned out that Dan was also spending his summers in Oakville. <laughs> so our friend John Kramer just said, yeah, you guys should, you know, hang out and uh, jam some yeah guitar. jam or whatever and yeah basically from there yeah. the rest is history wow yeah but yeah we both went to Mohawk College for music and then we both went to Wilfrid Laurier University in Waterloo for music oh wow and then we kind of split up Ruth <coughs> went to University of Victoria for yeah, her masters for two years and, and I was in Toronto yeah I did U of T for my masters and then we both met back up at the University of Alberta yeah all right so we've been in school for a long oh, time. Oh yeah, <laughs> now half of our lives, essentially. Ruth, what was your thesis paper? Oh, do you really want to hear this? <laughs> it's yeah. not offensive in any way, shape, or form. Um, I'm very interested in the act of listening, if you will. So I was trying to think of, uh, I'd read a lot of um, articles, books, on listening and what that meant, whether they were books like musical books or philosophy books, and uh, I found this. Um, I found a few things that helped influence my thesis. One was uh, this uh, style of, um, Im yeah, electronic improvisation that started in Japan called onkyo, which means quiet noise, um, where. Uh, people who went there had to be extremely focused on the music or the sounds being performed because they were so quiet, because they had to be so quiet, because the venues were in these business buildings, so they were surrounded by business offices and they could not be allowed at all. So there was a uh, um, sociologist who wrote a very interesting article on that and essentially the um, the uh, ethic that people had to abide to when they went to these concerts. So that kind of triggered it. So then I thought, okay, how do you get people to listen very carefully? Because I've been finding with a lot of uh, music in general that people don't really want to listen co with a very like concentrated uh, approach to music anymore. They kind of just want to put something in the background and not think about it. And so my thesis, to sort of try and bring this back to something a little simpler. What I did was I recorded um, literally everyday noises that were around me, whether they were in my apartment, out on the street, at the school. Um, manipulated those with uh, Max NSP software. Then I listened to all of that and I transcribed it for uh, a large uh, ensemble of acoustic instruments, essentially like a small orchestra, if you will. Mm -hmm and created a piece from there, essentially, and uh, along with the instruments playing in the background, you would have the actual sounds that I recorded processed, the way I processed them with Max and SP playing in the background. And with this recording, the ensemble of the instruments kind of react to it and play along with it. So 
these electronic sounds are then being performed by live acoustic instruments. And I thought that was a way to get people to uh, try and listen. So there you go. I probably lost everybody now. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was my doctoral thesis, yeah. Wow. That was the ball. That Thank just deserves a round of applause right there. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. Thank yeah, that's much. like our other life is like intense avant-garde classical music. Oh, okay. That's kind of what we do. We like we do like crazy death metal. We love all types of metal and stuff. Oh like yeah, that. <laughs> we like we like a lot of different styles yeah. of music. But the other really? is like avant-garde classical music. Okay. And, like that's what we basically went to school for. Like I didn't go to school for metal. I went to school for like composing classical music. Mm -hmm. So then, what made you want to do your pieces on metal? Always wanted to. I've been listening to metal since I don't know, like my nine years old. Or my brother, the drummer of our band, is uh, older than me, so he, he was always. We've always had babysitters give us like metal albums and like record things for us when our parents were around. Helix. Like, yeah. Helix. Oh. Uh, Helix. <laughs> Twisted Back Sister. Then, that's what it was. Rush. <laughs> you know things like that. And then when you got older, you started getting into Metallica and Megadeth back in like the big mid '90s mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I've always been into metal. And that's why I went to school was to like. I like all this, like a lot of like the avant-garde classical music is crazy intense emotionally, like yeah. super, super dark music. Stuff that makes you want to like just slit your wrist and cry and you know, oh, wow. sleep in a puddle of your own blood. And yeah, it's I like, I wanted to channel that into metal, like, yeah. like this highly emotional, complicated stuff into metal. So I was like, I have to go to school for a long time to figure out how to do this. Excellent. Now, well, for each of you individually, who is your, ins your main metal inspiration? Dave Mustaine. Oh. Okay. Well, for me, it's uh, I sort of came to the genre through Dan. I was on my way, I guess, but I wasn't listening to anything quite as intense as he uh, he was at the time. And right now, I'd have to say, yeah, Dave Mustaine's like songwriting has. I've been learning a lot of his songs, and it just completely blows me away, to be honest. Yeah, his stuff from the 80s it's blows everyone away. It's the, crazy. the song structure and everything is just mind-boggling, and yeah, it's uh, very, like the earlier stuff. It's very, like, Rust in Peace, and so far so good as the those albums kind of thing. Not those the new ones? Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we draw the line? Yeah. 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 I kind of draw the line. There. Like, There's a few songs I like up um, Countdown to Extinction. After that, I kind of shut down on Megadeth. Mm. No. You, you can't really argue with that, Kevin. Yeah. No, as long as you like the old stuff. It's, you yeah. know, a, lot of, oh, yeah. a lot of the catalog is already there. Oh, and yeah, uh, yeah you're, I you're happy felt with like that. I like I have everything I need after the first four albums. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's good for them to expand their their different uh, design, but it doesn't mean we have to follow along all the time. Exactly, yeah. I just kind of like, I didn't like the direction they're going. It's like, time to move on. There you go, yep. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of other bands that we've been introduced to uh, by our bass player, actually. Uh, much newer bands and a lot more underground that are also equally as brilliant. Um, Howls of Ebb. Thanty Facts Ebb. Yeah, Thanty Facts Ebb. Um, Abyssal. Uh, oh, Imperial Triumphant. Oh, Imperial Triumphant is okay. probably so another intense. band that would be very fitting uh, to like to play with us. They might actually be slightly more dissonant than we are. Yes, yeah, so they oh. actually take the approach to avant-garde like music composition um, and put it into metal. And it's yeah, it's, it's absolutely mind blowing too. Where would we find them other than YouTube and uh, and whatnot? Uh, Spotify has. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah they have them okay. Their their latest album's really good. That's it's crazy. A, is it called Vile or something like that? I don't remember. I, I forget. I, I don't remember song remember. names or album names or anything. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dakota. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Please search up the band. Oh, what was it? Dakota's time for Imperial? research. Imperial. Imperial. Triumphant. Oh, there we go. Imperial yeah. Triumphant. Where are they from? The state. Yeah, I forget exactly state. where, though. I'm a little embarrassed. Yeah, we need Dustin here. Yeah. He's like a researcher not, of the band. Not Justin. Dustin. Dustin, yeah. I, uh, I know the difference happen. between my D's and J's. <laughs> <laughs> I can make so many comments right now. <laughs> All about the D. <laughs> <laughs> you said you said you said. You said <laughs>
Oh! <laughs> oh, you lost me there. <laughs> Alright, well, since we're on the, the topic of Imperial Triumph, Triumphant. You got it. it. Thank you. Oh, what song you want here? We'll play it right live right now. You know um, what? Anything from that last album that's out there. Um, you just yes, because the first track. there's no explicit stuff on that album. That's good. Yeah. Probably just can't hear it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dakota. Yes, sir. I keep it's yelling. Right beside song. you. Just tap him on the head. I don't want to. Why? I don't abuse him. Uh, I'll bring you a stick if you want. No, that's worse. Stick no, that would be perfect with with the guests that we have today. You beat your slave. It's perfect. Could you tell me some tips on how to properly beat a um? Always take a Vlad the Impaler approach. Oh! That'll teach a slave a good lesson. Let me tell you. I'm not that cool. I support. Again. Am I your girlfriend? You, you support. <laughs> you support his idea. I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> Again, I I don't do that. I am not that department of your life. You have someone already to do that requesting stuff. Nothing to be ashamed of. Say Kayla. <laughs> I think you're getting. I think you're getting at what he would like. A gag ball? <laughs> so you guys want to hear Imperial Triumph? <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. He's embarrassed. Okay, Dakota, pick a song, any song. Not that song. <laughs> I'm kidding. Pick any song. Just don't press play yet. Let him turn on the pot. <laughs> and it created a riot in the streets of France because it was so crazy. Was it it was Paris? Specifically? Paris, yeah. It was so crazy, so avant-garde, like the music was nuts, the dancing was nuts, and like the general subject matter was about like oh, basically yeah, sacrificing a virgin for the pagan gods, and people like exploded. Ooh. It's also on Fantasia, the one with the dinosaurs, dinosaurs oh, Fantasia, okay. right? That's, that's, that's the right story. That's right. So yeah. I've always wanted to do it since I was like six years old, I've loved that piece of music, and since I was like a teenager, I was like, I gotta turn this into a piece of metal. So we're taking three movements. Okay. And we're combining um, modern 20th century poetry with these for the vocals. Okay. And we're gonna, that's going to be the next thing, like a little awesome. three-song demo. Hopefully we're going to start recording in the winter. But oh. you know how things go. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Now, <clears throat> we're down to the final question. We call it the poser question. It's a <laughs> question we ask. Sweet. <laughs> it's a question we ask every band on the channel. Josh, can you? REBEL! Hey! Oh, sorry. <clears throat> More people are coming. Side <laughs> tracks. <laughs> Ultimate side track ever. <clears throat> we call it the poser question because we want to ensure that we had on actual metalheads. Nope, the only people to get this wrong are metalcore bands because they're just fake metalheads. Okay. Who want to be metal. That's a lot of pressure. I don't know. Yeah. It, 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 it is. It is. You a question how that old we are. We might not even know the song. Oh, you, it is, oh no, 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 no. You'll know it. You should know it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. <clears throat> question is simple. Who would win in a fight? Lemmy or God? Oh, Lemmy. Hands down. <laughs> Lemmy would. I don't know. Lemmy would destroy God. You got it right, but it's a trick question because Lemmy is God. Oh! <laughs> oh we just well, there you failed. Go. Yeah, we did. Massive, but you know what? We're not metal core. I finally feel no, smart well, sitting I mean, beside we, them. I definitely have a huge appreciation, appreciation for Motorhead, but I'm not a hardcore fan. That is okay. I understand. This is just more or less we got from the a movie Airheads. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, I stole it from that because it. It's perfect for the last question. Well, of course. For sure. I can't believe I failed that. It is okay. But you did choose Lemmy. So I did. you did you did pick the right answer. <laughs> oh yeah, the right answer. There's yeah. only there's only two. That answers. guy survived everything. Until he didn't. He did. <laughs> May he rest in peace. Or as later can say rest in power. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you honestly think though Lemmy is resting in peace? I mean he's comfortable. 
I don't think he's just resting though. Yes, yeah. I hope he's having a ton He's of fun still wherever rocking wherever he is. Oh, yeah. 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 Doing Absolutely. everything he was I doing I mean, here. when you hear Absolutely. Lemmy's coming to the other side, it's like, oh, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, he's yeah. here. I bet you Satan even went, oh, Satan's no. I've been dreading this thing my whole life. <laughs> no, Satan's just dusting off the throne, getting yeah. it prepared. He's like, now i got to give it up. Yeah. All right. Uh, Time to step down. Goes on down on one knee. <laughs> my son. Like Dakota. <laughs> 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 oh, my son died. Oh, we were all totally. <laughs> He'd yes, have, you. He's gonna have no, to watch you. the video. You, come here. Is he gonna beat me up? No, 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 no. He doesn't know. Oh, you can take him. Hold on. Come in. Come in. Come over here. Come over here. See? Oh, he got down on both feet. Oh, yeah. Right. Ah, see? That is I devotion. wasn't lying. That is I wasn't lying. We were just talking about you. Oh. Yeah. That's how you did that exactly. Put a ring on that, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, but oh, oh yeah, it's on the one knee. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're not my type. Uh, you're not a girl, uh, and plus, you have a girlfriend who we're still expecting. We're still waiting her question of the week from. So you might want to get on that, Dakota. Yeah, I'll tell her, tell her to get on that, Kayla. Wow, you sounded so demanding, right? That was a very demanding you, voice. <clears throat> Dan, from one beautiful. Lovely. Hold on. Is it on the right stuff? No. Hold on. Now it's on the... Nope. Button. Work. Don't mess up my intro music. Oh, I... Oh, wait. What's going on now? Why isn't it playing? PC, yeah. No, wait. What's going on? <laughs> oh, what's geez. supposed to be playing? I'm confused. Uh, you know what's supposed to be playing. Okay. <laughs> you know oh. the name of this song. You you went down to it one at one point. Oh yes. Yeah, so Who did? I get it. Oh yes. Oh seriously, is it is it just not working? So it doesn't like you anymore. Oh wait, hold on. Select two. Oh yeah, select. Oh wait, select two. No. Here we go. From <laughs> one bride <laughs> to this bride. <laughs> I'll tell you what to do afterward. Ah. Uh. <laughs> It's a promise and a threat. <laughs> it's a promise and a threat. Now, was it difficult to get the light thing on? I forget what it's called. The, the garter. garter? The garter. Oh, there's no garter. That's the <laughs> <laughs> Threw that away long ago. Nobody's oh. sneaking around under his dress. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> the goat Maybe chewing someday. off. <laughs> so that's what <laughs> happened to the garter. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Dakota. Yes. When do I get my goat? Give me 24 hours. You have 12 hours. I can do that. Sure. I live and beside a goat order. farm. I live beside a goat farm. Oh, and oh wow. Yep. Oh. Oh! If you need a goat. Oh, man. We can come visit you soon. <laughs> Turn 19 <laughs> already, Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> so you can come to one of our shows. Yes. I want to I wanna scar this kid for life. Let's bring, let's bring your girlfriend to one of the shows. <laughs> no, don't. No, don't. <laughs> Should we bring his girlfriend to one of Oh, places? absolutely. Oh, sure. The more the merrier. Roof, should we bring his girlfriend to one of your shows? Oh, yeah. Would she be scarred for life? Probably. <laughs> Most definitely. It's like a bucket list But it's thing. good for you, though. Yeah, it is good for you. Yeah. And Dakota, one day... Like broccoli. You're going to have on a pretty white dress. You're going to have the flowers in your hand. And you're going to be able to proudly walk down the aisle to this song. <laughs> Bar gonna be so proud. <laughs> uh, buddy, you know we're just messing with you, right? Yeah. Or are we? I know where you get wedding dresses. <laughs> Sheep. Valley Village? Yeah. <laughs> or Valley Village. Like oh yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we're not just any kind of Canadians. We are the fancy Canadians that say okay. Baloo Village. Baloo Village. The higher end stuff, right? Yes, of course. Why go to the Salvation Army when you go to the Valley Village, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's just horrible to say. <laughs> Why? Salvation I Army. 
<laughs> people who need it. <laughs> when you can support diabetes. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Well, anyway, thank you so much, Dan and Ray, for being live in studio with us tonight. Our pleasure. Make sure to check out th 30 Immolated hey. uh, and 16 Return on, on all their social media platforms, which are? On Instagram, it's 30 immolated dot 16 returned, and on Facebook, Facebook it's 30 immolated it space, then equal one space, 16 returned. Honestly, if you just type in 30 immolated, yeah, you're just going to find it, but there are these weird spaces. Oh, and I have a website. Okay. You oh. just, if you type in 30 immolated, the website will come up too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, where can they find your music? Uh, on Bandcamp. Bandcamp. Just look up the name of the band. You can purchase it for $7. Correct. And, and a shirt. And the shirt! You got yeah. shirts! Yeah. Oh yeah, we got merch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, excuse me while I now work five extra shifts to be able to afford the shirt. Because <laughs> I don't want to I don't want feel not that much. I'm in college. $18, yeah, I know. $18 I is, a, is like a down payment on the house for us. <laughs> I remember those days. Yeah. <laughs> One more point than that. Saturday, November 30th, at the Doors Pub, you can go see 30 Immolated and 16 Return live for the last time this year in Hamilton. How much are tickets? Five dollars or pay what you can. Wait, seriously? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Man, that's awesome. Yep. Now, I, now I feel bad for working. We just want more slaves, so you know, we'll bring them in for free. You pay with your blood. Do you, uh, are you looking for male slaves? Actually, yeah. Actually, we might have one in the future gigs. We have we we did have one for you. He he's a bit big. He's a ginger. Oh. We call him Big Juicy G. Well, <laughs> gingers deserve it, so yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's not kick a ginger day. Yet. That's every day is kick a ginger. No, day. every day is torture the <laughs> ginger. <laughs> sad. He does look really sad now. <laughs> Or is he really happy that he gets to be tortured by you all? Maybe. Maybe. He's <laughs> <laughs> <Starts off laughs> writing it really well. Yeah. He is. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you both so much. I must get. I must let you two go and be back with your five-year-old because I don't want to steal his parents from him because that would suck. Well, yeah. he is asleep, but yeah. yes, we. Yeah. Uh, he thanks you. Yes, no. he thanks you anyway. And You're so do we. The babysitter does too. Oh, <laughs> you are welcome, and again, you are more than welcome on the show. But up right now, we have all the way from Calgary. Here is Juliet Rillin with Only Rage. <laughs>